Yeah. Phil Ridley, CEO and founder with Quasar Satellite Technologies. Thanks for joining us again on Australia in Space TV. It's a pleasure, Chris. Thank you so much. Great to be here in person uh, in Canberra with CIA's uh, the Space Industry Association of Australia's Southern mm. Space Conference. Mm -hmm. But we uh, just caught up recently at CSIRO in your offices uh, with your lab there in, in Sydney, Marsville. in yeah. Marsville. Mm. Uh, and I was able to walk through uh, your your site, I suppose, I'll call it for want of a better word. Mm. Congratulations, it's a very impressive piece of kit you've got there uh, you. and what you're doing. Maybe introduce us to satellite. It's almost satellite as a service is kind of the business model we've got here. It is, right? isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So we've developed uh, a new kind of phased array technology that can uh, scan the whole sky and also talk to multiple satellites simultaneously. Yeah. And that service will be available to customers to consume, like the cloud. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. that's X band at the moment. Uh, S band. S band. Actually. But yeah. you want to get to X band. Yep. So our S band system is live, yes. and our X band system will go live uh, in about a month and a half's time. Okay. Hmm. So the site that we looked at in um, Marsville. In, in yep. Marsville. Yeah. So the site that we looked at in Marsville mm. is, I wouldn't say the trial site. It's operational. Yes. But you are looking at making this mobile as well. Yes, we are. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So the first prototype sits on a ten-foot uh, shipping container, so it can be moved around. Yep. Uh, and we designed it deliberately to do that. You know, put it in a helicopter or an aircraft and it can be moved around to a place where it can be needed so where the congestion of the problems are we designed that deliberately otherwise typical technologies today can uh, you know they could be taken out or they lose power or something this can be moved where it needs to be moved so maybe just to explain again mm. the sensors that are there and we talked about a satellite as you can change mm. what the one uh, facility does yeah. given the amount of uh, sensors that it has yes that's right yeah so the sensor is actually multi-purpose so we can communicate with satellites we can do space main uh, awareness and space surveillance simultaneously on the same antenna at the same time. Right. Yeah, and we can point different beams at different orbits. Uh, we can go below uh, LEO, we can go up to GEO. And so the technology does many, many different things. And so that's all on one antenna at the same time. That's a world first. And uh, yeah, we intend to have these sites located in strategic places around Asia and Pacific. Right. Mm. Can you segment what they're doing in the data that they're, that they're receiving and yes. from a security viewpoint? Yeah, yeah. So we designed it to be dual use. So we right. actually have um, separate data streams per user case and yep. we deliver that data securely. So we design it specifically for that use case where defence and civilian people can use it at the same time. Okay. Mm. And look, it's an amazing piece of technology. I've got <coughs> some photos and we'll do some overlays for this particular uh, session as well. But I think in terms of uh, the technology itself, how mm. you've built that, mm. Where did some of the research come from and where do you see it developing? Mm. It's a really good question actually. So um, CSIRO Radio Astronomy developed some of the first phased arrays. The world leaders in RF technologies have been for many, many years and the technology that we have was based on radio astronomy actually. It was designed to listen to quasars, hence our name, yep. and pulsars. And while I was involved in the business, my job was to convert that technology into something we'd use for space and satellites. And so that technology is developed by CSIRO. We modified that technology and then we added all of the infrastructure around that in order to be our full uh, full capability ground station as well. And business-wise, what's mm. the model going to be? Is it it's a SAS model to access and control this? But yes. yeah, from a, are, are you in business already um, from a um, customer's viewpoint? We, or what's your... Yeah, right so we're, we're about to enter the commercial market for data services, right. uh, which is uh, very good. Uh, overseas customers, in fact, in two countries. Um, we also support an infrastructure model though too. So we can, obviously with the stations are, you can use them and you can task them in real time. However, we also will support for certain government customers acquiring the equipment and putting the equipment in certain locations with exclusive access to those users. And they can just program it themselves and you They'll, don't need any need to know? We don't want to know. One, beautiful. <laughs> um, and I suppose, yeah, what, how does this look internationally for you? Mm. Uh, it's Australian tech, um, mm. and do you want to export that? Yes, we do, yeah. We've had very, very strong interest, actually, in the Five Eyes, particularly in AUKUS. Um, yeah. So we've had very strong interest in the US. The US Space Force has uh, invited us to the Catalyst Accelerator, right. which we finished. And now we're participating, which I can announce today, we're participating in the SDA Apollo Tap Lab, which is US Wonderful. Space Force's skunk works for getting new technologies into the Space Force. And you're there now, right? We have people team? there right now yeah. integrating our systems into theirs. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose the other one is... We mentioned S band. Mm. You are progressing to X band. Are you mm -hmm. doing? Are you, is there a limitation 
on what you're able to do in terms of the band network? Yeah, uh, there are more challenges as we go higher in bands, but yeah, at the moment we have S, which is mostly for control on small satellites, yeah. X, which is mostly Earth observation and defence. We intend to go to K band. Right. The K band, of course, is used by the internet constellation, so the yeah. Starlink, that sort of thing. We can also go lower, so we can go from L band, which is UHF. So we are really can do the whole spectrum, but as we move up the frequencies, we need to develop newer kind of chips because the number of elements in the arrays is extremely high. So it's like a digital camera, we have to digitise every part of it. I was going to say, so you yeah. can't, from the one sensor, mm. move across that spectrum, they will need to be spectrum specific? Uh, it, in the first generation we were on, yes, but right. we are also working on a multi-band system as well. Wow, okay. Yeah. But that's Very about two years off. Okay, wonderful. Look, yeah. Phil, uh, you hosted us out there at CSIRO in Sydney, uh, it was great to, to see you. Second time you've been on Australia in Space TV, great oh. to see you in person here in, in Canberra, and thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. It's been an absolute pleasure, thanks so much Chris. Thanks, Cheers. Bill.